Pneumonia. Pneumonia is an inflammation of the lungs parenchyma caused by various microorganisms including bacteria, mycobacteria, fungi, and viruses. It is a serious infection in which the air sacs fill with pus and other liquid. Low bar pneumonia affects one or more section of the lungs and bronchial pneumonia, also known as bronchopneumonia, affects patches throughout both lungs. Pneumonitis is a more general term that describes an inflammatory process in the lung tissue that may predispose or place the patient at risk for microbial invasion. Pneumonia can range from mild to life-threatening. It is most serious for infants and young children, people older than 65 years old, and people with health problems or weakened immune system. Epidemiology of Pneumonia Pneumonia is a common respiratory infection affecting approximately 450 million people in a year and occurring in all parts of the world. It is a major cause of death among all age groups, resulting in 1.4 million deaths in 2010, seventh of the world's yearly total, and 3 million deaths in 2016, which is the fourth leading cause of death in the world. A study carried out by the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention aimed at estimating its burden in North America found that CAP or the Community Acquired Pneumonia accounted for the eighth leading cause of mortality in the United States and the seventh leading cause of mortality in Canada after adjusting for various gender and age differences. Causes of pneumonia. So many germs can cause pneumonia. The most common are the bacteria, viruses, and the fungi that uh, we breathe from the air. Our body usually prevents these germs from infecting our lungs. But sometimes these germs can overpower our immune system especially those who are immunocompromised patient, and even if our um, health is generally good. What are the different classifications of pneumonia? One is the community-acquired pneumonia. Community-acquired pneumonia is the most common type of pneumonia. It occurs outside of the hospitals or other healthcare facilities or within 48 hours after hospitalization or institutionalization. It may be caused by bacteria. The Streptococcus pneumoniae or the pneumococcus is the most common cause of CAP in people younger than 60 years without comorbidity and in 60 years old older with comorbidity. And bacteria-like organisms such as the Mycoplasma pneumoniae also can cause atypical pneumonia. So Mycoplasma pneumonia is spread by infected in respiratory droplets through person-to-person -person contact. It typically produces milder symptoms than do other types of pneumonia. And the microplasma pneumonia is also called as the walking pneumonia and um, atypical pneumonia. Fungi. This type of pneumonia is most common in people with chronic health problems or weakened immune systems and in people who have inhaled large doses of the organisms. And viruses, including the COVID-19, some of the viruses that cause colds and the flu can cause pneumonia. Viruses are the most common cause of pneumonia in children younger than 5 years of age. 
Viral pneumonia is usually mild, but in some cases, it can become very serious. Hemopinus influenza causes a type of cough that frequently affects older adults and those with comorbid illnesses. What do you mean by comorbid illnesses? They also have um, COPD or those who are, um, those who are alcoholic and um, um, diabetic or with diabetes. The next classification is the hospital-acquired pneumonia. Hospital acquired pneumonia develops 48 hours or more after admission and does not appear to be incubating at the time of admission. The most common organism responsible for hospital acquired pneumonia includes the Enterobacter species, Escherichia coli, H. influenzae, Klebsiella species, Prochus seracia mersensens, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, methicillin sensitive or methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus, and Staphylococcus pneumoniae or the pneumonias from Klebsiella or other gram negative organisms. They are characterized by the destruction of lung structure and alveolar walls consolidation and bacteremia. So what is alveolar walls consolidation? It is the tissue that solidifies as a result of a collapse, alveoli, or infections, infectious process such as pneumonia. So the next is the ventilator-associated pneumonia. Ventilator-associated pneumonia can be considered as a subtype of the hospital-acquired pneumonia. However, the patient has been endotracheally intubated and has received mechanical and ventilator or the ventilatory support for at least 48 hours. So, VAP is a complication in as many as 28% of patients who require mechanical ventilation. The etiologic bacteriologic agents associated with VAT typically differ from based on the timing and the occurrence of the infection. Next is the healthcare acquired pneumonia. Healthcare acquired pneumonia is a bacterial infection that occurs in people who live in a long-term care facilities or who receive care in an outpatient clinic, including the kidney dialysis clinic. The next one is the aspiration pneumonia. Aspiration pneumonia occurs as a consequence resulting from the entry of endogenous and exogenous substances into the lower airway, such as when you ex inhale a food, drink, or vomit or your saliva that directly goes into your lungs and aspiration is more likely if something disturbs your normal gag reflex such as a brain injury or a swallowing problem or even the excessive use of alcohol or drugs so the most common form of aspiration pneumonia is the bacterial infection from aspirations of bacteria that normally resides in the airway. The next is the pneumonia in the immunocompromised host. Pneumonia in the immunocompromised host includes pneumocystis pneumonia, fungal pneumonias, and mycobacterium tuberculosis. The organisms that causes PCP is now known as pneumocystitis Gerovici instead of pneumocystitis carini. Here I will discuss to you um, a short discussion of the pathophysiology of pneumonia. In this diagram, you can see the risk factors, the more than 65 years old, smoking, immunocompromised or immunocompressive disorders, corticosteroid therapy, malnutrition, residency in the long-term care facility. 
and um, I put also a legend wherein you can see that the etiology or risk factors is being signs and symptoms is the blue, diagnostic test is orange, and pharmacologic interventions is the pitch. Now, let's begin with. So, most pneumonia occurs when a breakdown in our body's natural defenses allows germs to invade and multiply within our lungs. The organisms that then enter the upper respiratory tract then moves to the lower respiratory tract, particularly in the alveoli. Invasion of organisms such as the bacteria, viruses, or fungi in the spaces between cells and the connecting pores can trigger the inflammatory response of the body, causing the blood vessels to dilate, leading to capillary, capillary leak. So once our immune system is triggered, one of the inflammatory response of our body is fever. And after fever, we will have the dehydration. Then, it can cause also hypotension and tachypnea. Dehydration is due to the insensible loss from fever. Now, once our inflammatory response is triggered, there will be release of neutrophils proteins, and RBC. Now, with the release of this, there will be a release of cytokines and fluid buildup also in the alveoli. With the fluid buildup of the alveoli, there will be bronchospasm that can lead to ventilation, perfusion, mismatch, and arterial hypoxemia. So, if the patient has a bronchospasm, the patient may experience signs and symptoms of cough, which may produce sputum. Wheezing, um, the patient also will have a pleuritic chest pain, or topnia, or the shortness of breath. Now, the fluid buildup can also cause fever. And also, a cons consolidation of lungs, tactile fremitus, crackles, and egopony. So now, if there will be a fluid build up in the air sacs within the lungs, or known as the alveoli, you know, alveoli is the, um, it is the place where the exchange of gas and carbon dioxide takes place. So, fluid buildup and edema occurs that can impair the gas exchange. So, breathing may be labored, leading to hypoxia and in severe cases leads to sepsis and death. Now, if the patient has hypoxia, the patient may experience signs and symptoms of anxiety, rapid weak pulse, dysrhythmia, central cyanosis, and also headache. Now, what is the priority um, or the pharmacologic intervention that we can do? But first, we need also to rule out the diagnostic test for us to give the proper antibiotic. So, now, the doctor will order a chest x-ray, a pulse oximetry, AVG analysis, sputum test, blood test, bronchoscopy, CT scan, and pleural fluid culture. Now, nurses can provide IV therapy as ordered, um, oxygen therapy as ordered, corticosteroids also as ordered by the physician, NSAIDs, bronchodilators, and um, antibiotics, and antipyretics. So, a classic sign of bacterial pneumonia is a cough that produces thick blood tinge or yellowish, greenish sputum with pus. So, the risk factors include children who are 2 years old and older, 
people who are 65 years old and other risk factors include hospitalized patient because they are um, at greater risk of pneumonia, chronic diseases such as COPD and heart diseases, smoking because smoking damages your body's natural defenses against the bacteria and viruses that are causing pneumonia, and also a weakened or suppressed immune system, those uh, people who have HIV or AIDS, and also malnutrition. So what are the different signs and symptoms of pneumonia? So signs and symptoms of pneumonia may vary from mild to severe depending on the types and the uh, of the, uh, the types and the factors of the germ that is causing the infection. And of course, your age and your overall health. So, one of the signs and symptoms are chest pain when you breathe or cough. Confusion or changes in mental awareness. This is common in um, adults who are 65 and older. Cough, which may produce phlegm. Fatigue. Fever, sweating and shaking chills, lower than normal, bo normal body temperature, nausea, vomiting or diarrhea, shortness or, of breath, and for newborns and infants, these symptoms may not show or they may not have any sign of the infection or sometimes they will vomit and have a high fever and cough and they, they appear to be restless, tired, and without energy. So the diagnostic test includes chest x-ray to take pictures of the internal tissues, bones, and organs including the lungs, blood test, arter or, or um, arterial blood gas testing checks the amount of oxygen in your bloodstream, Pulse oximetry measures the amount of oxygen in the blood. Sputum culture to see if there is an infection in the lungs. Chest uh, CT scan shows a detailed image of any part of the body, including the bones, the muscles, the fat, and the organs. Bronchoscopy also is done to evaluate and diagnose lung problems to assess blockages and take out samples of the tissue and or fluid for testing. And lastly, pleural fluid culture to find out which bacteria is causing the pneumonia. Next is the pharmacologic uh, intervention. We can also administer antibiotics, oxygen therapy, bronchodilators, corticosteroid, pain medicine, antipyretic, and other treatment such as eating well, inc increasing fluid intake, getting enough rest, and some cough relief medicine if the cough is severe. So for most viral pneumonias, you don't need um, any specific treatment because viral pneumonias usually get better on their own. So, here I have put two priority nursing uh, um, diagnoses that we can use for pneumonia. First is the ineffective airway clearance related to tick sputum secondary to pneumonia as evidenced by rapid respirations and diminished breath sounds. Due to the inflammation and increased sputum production from pneumonia, the patient is unable to effectively remove these secretions, causing blockage of the airway. It is usually observed in patients who are weak or lack of a cough reflex to clear the mucous secretion. Number two, we can also put activity intolerance related to impaired respiratory function. As we see, 
the an insufficient physiologic or psychological energy to endure or complete required or desired daily activities due to decrease or impaired lung function associated with weakness, fatigue, chest pain, when coughing, and shortness of breath. We have here some priority nursing interventions for ineffective airway clearance and activity intolerance. First is to monitor the vital signs of the patient. This is done to assess cardiac output and detect changes in the respiratory rate and pattern. Then we can encourage the, to, um, the patient to take a deep breathing and coughing technique. This will help to promote oxygena oxygenation. We will also monitor the patient's response to pharmacologic agents and document changes in secretion. Assist the patient in changing positions as needed to reduce airway obstruction, enhance secretion, clearance, and pulmonary ventilation and perfusion. Assess for areas of infection or irritation. Educate patients about proper hydration and the importance of an adequate diet. Instruct patients to avoid exposure to irritants and instruct smokers to quit. Administer medications. Motivate and assist the patient with incentive spirometry. Monitor for increased restlessness, anxiety, and air hunger. Why do we have to monitor this? This, this is a clinical manifestation of an early signs of hypoxia. Encourage rest and avoid overexertion and possible exacerbation of symptoms. To engage in moderate activity only. And we can also help the patient assume a comfortable position or a semi fowler's position to promote rest and breathing. So, some of the complications of pneumonia include bacteremia, difficulty of breathing, neural effusion, lung abscess, um, shock, and respiratory failure. We can also do some preventive measures such as to be vaccinated, practice good hygiene, always wash your hands, um, do not cough in public, protect yourself against respiratory infections that sometimes lead to pneumonia, and always use um, hand sanitizer, don't smoke. This is very important because smoking damages your lungs and your natural defenses against respiratory, respiratory infections. And always keep your immune system strong. Have a good sleep. Exercise regularly. Eat a healthy diet. Drink your vitamins and um, maintain a healthy lifestyle. That's it. So I included here my references and a disclaimer to this video that I do not own the photos. So the, I do give credit to the rightful owner of the photos and um, thank you for something uh, good today. Thank you!